Hey guys, welcome back to the arena. Today we're going to be looking at Boros Humans. If you're new to my channel, thank you so much for stopping by. And if you do end up liking my content, please consider subscribing and maybe sharing it with a friend of yours. For my returning viewers, thank you guys so much again for coming back and supporting me. It really does mean the world to me. Uh, you will find a deck list in the description, both on untapped.gg and moxfield.com, and then a link to all of my playlists for both constructed and limited uh, draft, as well as road to rank one for best of one standard and standard events. So check those out if you're interested. I do want to give a shout out here to my members. Thank you guys so much again for becoming members. It's a great way to support the, ch the, the, uh, the channel and to support me personally, so I really appreciate that. Um, if you do want to consider it, you will get early access to my content for as little as $1.99 a month. So that'd be a great way to help support me. And here's exactly how you do that. If you would like to become a member and help support my channel, you can do so. Just click on the join button right next to where it says subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. Um, or if you would like to just support my channel just on a one-time basis, you can also click the super thanks button uh, here right on the, uh, also right under the banner here for the video. So these are both great ways to support the channel. I really appreciate you guys and I couldn't do this without you. So thank you guys so much again for your consideration. All right, let's get into some games. Okay, let's go ahead and jump in. So today we're looking at Boros Humans and I spent a lot of time thinking about this deck and why it just seemed like it was a worse version of Boris Convoke. And then I realized something. Um, I wanted to automatically jam four copies of Knight Errant of Eos, but the deck actually, I think, works better without it. Partly because in the current meta, the mono red decks are so aggressive and can kill you so quickly that you really need that early turn one um, answer to it such as Elspeth Smite or a March of Otherworldly Light. And so with this kind of build, we have fewer one drops, which means that it's harder to basically play into a Knight Errant of Eos profitably. And so instead, we have a lot of great three drops that are sort of fighting for that slot. And so basically by cutting the Knight Errant of Eos, that frees up room for a full play set of Brutal Cathar, a full play set of Imidane's Recruiter, Adeline Resplendent Cathar, and then a one of copy of Roaming Throne, which I think is sort of a nice top end. You can name human. This is really powerful with things like Imidane's Recruiter, where you can essentially get a double buff. Um, also with Brutal Cathar, you can exile two creatures. With Adeline, you can create two attack, two one one um, attack and attacking creatures. And then with Lunark Veteran, gain extra life triggers. So it's actually a really nice top end. And I think this kind of answers the question of what do we uh, replace Knight Errant of Eos with. For the two drop, I really, really like a full play set of Copper Coat Vanguard, Intrepid Adversary, which is necessary for the life gain to help fight against the aggro decks, and three copies of Thalia, just to slow down both control and also the mono red burn decks. And then in our one drop slot, we have a full play set of Lunark Veteran to help gain life, three copies of Recruitment Officer, which pairs really well with Brutal Cathar on the turns that you want to flip it. And then we also have a full play set of March of Otherworldly Light, which is just kind of a catch-all to deal with anything, help you deal with temporary lockdown, help you deal with um, Slick Shot, um, whatever it's called, the uh, show-off. Yeah. And then three copies of Elspeth Smite, which is really nice against the red decks. It's great against Boros. It's also really good against uh, blue-white control if they're trying to use their Restless Anchorage to block and keep you off uh, swinging in for game. So this is a nice way to kind of deal with that. Um, for the land count, we are at 22 lands. And I think the 22 lands kind of makes sense because there are games you definitely want to kind of go big with Recruiter and go for the uh, adventure to make some knights before you get in. Um, you also have extra mana sinks here with Recruitment Officer and also with Intrepid Adversary, plus the Mirix to, um, the two Mirix lands we've got. So we have a lot of stuff to do with extra mana. For the um, breakdown of the lands, 
We have 15 red sources to help us cast Imidane's Recruiter, and the full play set of Cavern of Souls, which is super good right now with all the insane amounts of counter spells flying around in Azorius Control, and then two copies of Myrix to help you kind of go long. Um, we also have three copies of Iganjo to give you sort of additional threats for removal. I thought about running a full play set, but because this deck does occasionally want to get up to like four and five mana, I decided to go down to three copies of Iganjo. I think in mono white humans, it makes more sense to run a full play set because you really do kind of top out at three, but here you can go four or five. So having a couple fewer Iganjos sort of makes sense. And then we make up for it by having, having these Elf's Best Smites. So yeah, this is the deck. Let's go ahead and jump in. Hope everybody's been having a great day so far. Um, I'm really excited actually about the upcoming best of three play-in for uh, Limited that's gonna be this Friday. So I, I recommend checking it out if you are considering trying to do sort of your last chance play-in for the qualifier weekend, which is gonna be um, OTJ sealed. So I think, um, yeah, there's a, uh, there's a link that I think maybe I'll try to add here in the description. I saw a video, uh, one of uh, Paulo Vitor Dama de Rosa's videos, and it was an older video, but it was really, really good. It was talking about Sealed, and just had some really kind of general great ideas for how to play Sealed. I felt like I was always really doing badly at Sealed and didn't really understand how to succeed at it, because it's really different than Draft, and he just kind of nails it all down. So I'll, I'll include a link in the description as well. But basically, in Sealed, you want to try to focus on power over consistency. And if that means playing three or four color, so be it. All right, let's hop in. Um, yeah, hand looks great. We've got stuff to do. So this could be Demir. This could be like the Zoetic Glyph uh, nonsense deck. Either way, March is really good. They must have kept a one lander. Oof. Uh, that's good news for us. All right, let's just go veteran into recruitment officer and just keep the pressure up. So yeah, I'm kind of curious to see how this change um, will affect the deck without any Knight Errants, but conceptually at least it's it's actually pretty exciting. Oh, this is the Ninja's deck. Nice. I think, yeah, this deck is actually almost budget, so if some of you guys want to try out a deck that doesn't take a whole bunch of rares, this might be a decent deck to check out the... Um, I don't know if it's just mono blue or if it's Demir, but yeah, it's pretty fun. Okay, so we could March plus Vanguard. I actually kind of like that. Um, the other play here is we could go for Brutal Cathar. Hmm. I mean, Cathar is probably just like the best overall, just to get rid of this uh, Prosperous Thief. Yeah. Like, if they block one of our recruitment officers, it's okay. I think we just don't want to leave that Prosperous Thief around for any length of time. Yeah, we've got nice board presence here, so I'm not too worried about this. And the fact that they stumbled on land that one turn is really helping us here. Yeah, it's a little bit too late there. So now we can just march and, uh, yeah, provided we draw the planes, but we did, so that works. We can also just go for adversary here. I don't think it really matters. I think I'm just going to march plus copper coat because that feels really good.
Yeah, beware the auto tapper to tap all of your <laughs> useful sources when you have like Mirixes in play, so just be careful about that. It's happened to me more than more than once. Yeah, and that should do it there, either way. All right, GG's. Also, in case you guys haven't watched uh, Paul Chien's stuff, I really like him as uh, another content creator. I, I do love watching his limited content, and I'm definitely going to be excited to see um, his videos here for playing in the qualifier weekend. I think he's qualified. If he's not, well, at any rate, check his stuff out if you, if you like limited. Okay. Do we want to keep this? I mean, we've got some stuff to do on one. It's not out of the realm of possibility. I don't like mulliganing when I can avoid it. And I think we have like stuff to do for a couple turns. I don't know, I'm gonna keep it. We'll try it out. I think because we've got smite, like we have contingency plans if things don't work out. So there's a chance that they have the slick shot show off next turn. Um, question is, I think we can still just play out another creature here though, just to kind of stay aggressive. Like once we see them play it or prep it, then we can hold up our smite. Yeah, and there it is. Yeah, maybe we should have held up the smite. Problem is now if they have like monstrous rage, it's just awful. So I think we just play out the veteran here for additional life gain. Yeah, and they had the monstrous rage. too late here um yeah smite's not gonna work i guess we just play adversary we could also i suppose play thalia but i mean even one spell will kill us here so i think we just go for the adversary and i think we have to like hold back here too just because they've got trample it's it's basically just really bad Yeah, and they've got it. Okay. That's probably on me for holding a one lander there. And I guess not respecting the possibility by holding up smite. Yeah, mono red these days is just so incredibly explosive, it's just out of control. So I think if they let us keep it, we probably go for Thalia here. Yeah, so much for that.
This is still decent though. If we're able to draw into some land, we can get Adeline going. Hopefully they don't have Rafine here. All in all, that was a pretty soft turn for us, though. I mean, Jace is probably one of the better draws that they, um, for us at least. So happy to not see Rafine there. I don't think we want to brew Cathar yet because they've got like more action in their hand for sure. So I think Adeline here is definitely the right play. And then just start working on Jace a little bit. Yeah, and if they want to get rid of the Jace just for the draw, we're totally fine with that. So, I think... We probably just want to go Thalia plus Copper Coat here and float the Ganjo. Now it's possible that they have like a deadly cover up, which would suck, but I think it's still worth trying to push here a little bit. But actually, I guess since we have Thalia, they can't play it next turn, so that's kind of nice. And now it's like Path again, or they're just dead. Like, that's the power of having Imidane's Recruiter in hand. It's so good. Yeah. Good enough. I also love how much faster this deck is than the Azorius control deck. That was an interesting thing to play and take through the um, best of one standard event. And I guess if you haven't seen it, uh, check that out. It'll be in the description. But uh, I, I really don't mind shorter games. Okay, let's see how we fare against Boros Convoke. This is a pretty big slice of the metagame right now, so being able to hold our own here is going to be good. So they're just going to go for reinforcements here and probably try to set up for like Knight Errant next turn. If they have, I guess I do want the Thalia here just in case they've got some kind of buff. Um, also this will slow down their Gleeful Demolition or like turn three War Leaders call. But yeah, we don't want to attack here. Actually, this is kind of interesting. I mean, trading for one of their one ones might actually be worth it because it kind of slows them down from like sort of going you know, thermonuclear here. So actually, maybe we do attack and trade here just a little bit. Like from the other side of the table, having played that deck, like they need all of their one ones to do stuff. So you can often like finesse in extra damage when you think you really can't. Okay, Adeline feels pretty good.
and it looks like they're holding up a pretty clear um, Iganjo. So I don't think, do we care is the real question. I guess they could Iganjo or Thalia and then just play stuff next turn. I think we actually just hold here because they didn't have reinforcements last turn and I highly doubt they've got it now. They could have drawn into it, but I think we just hold. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they were just holding up Iganjo there. That's the only thing that kind of like really makes sense. Yeah, Knight Errant for one is just fine with us. Now we've got our own Iganjo. We can just copper coat with Iganjo backup. Um, actually, we could even recruiter plus Iganjo. Yeah, we probably just do that. Because we've got the double discount. Yeah, Iganjo for one feels so good. And that's got to be game. Good roaming thrown here, but Copper Coat is just better for pushing damage. Yeah, this deck feels so good having 12 pump effects between four copper coats, four Imidane's recruiters, and four um, intrepid adversaries. Like, just feels really good. And I think just like having the recruiter in the deck alone, like just the threat of having it against control is just, you can't put a price on that. Double Iganjo is kind of rough, but yeah, I think we're definitely keeping this. We've got a lot of stuff to do on one. Hopefully we draw into another land. That feels pretty good. I guess I'll play out one of the Iganjos here, just because I don't know what flavor of mono white we're up against. So yeah, mono white humans most likely here. I think we just go creature creature.
push Vanguard here. Um, we've also got Smite, and we can pay the the cost for it. I think we want to just play out the Vanguard here, because like we're not pushing a lot of damage, and it would just suck our entire turn to do the Smite. So I guess now we could threaten with officer. The problem is like they just block with veteran, which is pretty good for them. I think we just want to start drawing cards here. Adversary is pretty good. Okay, well that's great. So now if we a ganjo actually never mind. I was thinking we could Iganjo the Thalia, but we have to pay the cost for it. So I think we just smite. Hmm. I guess we want to have both. So like we just Iganjo the Vanguard here. Yeah, I think we just do that. And now I think we trade officer for officer. I think we want to keep our veterans here, just keep our life kind of going. Okay, that's a nice draw. Cathar is pretty good here before Skrelv goes active. I almost kind of want to take the recruitment officer, but I think adversary is just good enough that we take it. So I think first thing though is that we can finesse an attack here. Since we've got smite. So they probably just like block block. Yeah, I think we can push an attack here. Yeah, just get a little cheeky for some damage, some life that feels pretty good. Now the only danger of taking adversary here is if they find another Brutal Cathar and have extra mana up, they could essentially get more value out of it at some point, but for now I think it's pretty good to have it out of the way. <laughs> okay, there's the Brutal Cathar. Oh, good lord. Oh, that's funny. All right, that was pretty good though. So yeah, now we can push Smite. And now we get his full send actually. 
Um, actually, never mind. They've got Skrelv, so we don't just full send. We could send with these two, though. We could have pushed Recruiter there, but I think we just want to get extra value out of it, though. Because we're not pushing that much more damage, and they're not that low. They drew into a creature. Oh. oh, that sucks. I guess, though, like now they don't get any extra benefit off the adversary. So we could still swing out here with Adeline. Um, I think I just want to go for Recruiter, though. Because they most likely will probably be willing to trade their adversary now for our Adeline. So let's just go ahead and train some troops. Yeah, and I don't think swinging here is super great without having a smite up. Although, actually, Smite doesn't really do anything because they've got Skrelv. So, like, if we attack, how do they block? They probably just block with Adversary plus Veteran. It's pretty awkward. Yeah. I mean, it's okay. I think we could just sit with it, though. Yeah, now Officer is really shining here. They've got their own Adeline on deck. So if we push with everyone here, they eat two of our creatures with Thalia and Moonrage Brute. Doesn't feel very good. I think unfortunately we just sit. Yeah, I think in hindsight, we probably should have taken their officer over the adversary, as crazy as that sounds.
So now we have an interesting play. We could attack and try to threaten with Smite in order to get them to use their Skrelv. And so that we can get our Brukathar going. Question is, do we re recruit her here to really sell it? Yeah, we don't have enough mana, actually. I think we just got to push. This is a little crazy, but I think we definitely want to try to get him to buy it. And now we've got to eat the uh, the scrub, unfortunately. Oof, that's too bad. pretty gross that might be it just right right there all right so I think we're just dead but let's take a look so if we go here we can use smite to take out gotta block Adeline Now we're taking 5, 10, 13, 17, 20, 23, 27. We're not dead. Yeah, I think that's the play. I think, yeah, if we don't take Adversary, everything's huge. We still die to Warden unless we draw something really good. So I think we have to take out the Warden. Yeah, I think we're just, we're just dead in so many ways. Okay, we might have a chance here. We let everything flip. Are we in this? So we can march their adversary. Oh, good lord. <laughs> Another adversary. Oh, this is so over the top. Okay, I don't think we can beat that. We might have been in it for a minute there. Probably not even, but... Yeah, this is just obscene. Um, I think we're just dead, but it, let's see. So we get rid of that. Okay, now I think we chomp the Adeline. Definitely want to first strike down the officer and the adversary. I think we're still just really dead. Yeah, we're taking just too much here. Oh, well. Yeah, if they didn't have that extra one, maybe. <laughs> didn't quite get there. So I think this game was, was interesting because, like, in hindsight, the correct move would have been to take their officer and just try to, like, hold it together until we drew something. These games here, like Mono White against Mono White or Boros against Mono White, is often determined by whoever has the most or the best control of their uh, Brutal Cathars. So, yeah, it was fun. Um, let's take a look at the stats. All right, so we're 3-2, 60% win rate right now. 
I'm literally just, just made the deck, so I am excited about it, though. <laughs> Apparently, we are 0% win on the play and 75% on the draw. <laughs> um, anyways, thanks, guys, for watching. I really appreciate you. You guys are awesome. We will see you next time. Thank you.